few things become dominant platforms for the web, and React is one of those. But that library is hyper-focused on building user interfaces, not web applications. So another company, Vercel, created what's called a meta framework called Next.js. It gives you just about every modern feature you need to help you build modern web applications. Things like routing, image optimization, an excellent development environment, and support for just about any way to create CSS. Let's take a look at what it takes to build a sample application with Next.js. I'm going to pull up a terminal and I'll install Next.js with an npx command. This will be npx create next app, and we'll put in at latest here. Now this will ask you for a project name. I'm just gonna call mine next demo, and this is gonna install React, React DOM, as well as Next.js for you. Let's go ahead and quit out of our terminal, and we'll open this up in Visual Studio Code. Before we do anything else, let's take a look at what we got here. So you can see there's the default readme that's on every project, plus a package.json, so it does have a few commands that you can run. And then you have a config file. Then we have an ESLint file, which is fine. And here we have the main three folders that we're gonna be working with. We have a styles folder, a public folder, and a pages folder. Now public is pretty straightforward. This is where you would put any files that you just want to push along to the server. You also have this pages folder, and this is where most of your work gets done. The index.js file is the entry point. Right now it has some default sort of info there. And then there's this app.js file. This is sort of a file that is shared by all of the different components. So if you wanna load anything in here, notice that it's loading a global CSS file. So clearly this is calling the styles folder, which right now has a global CSS file, just some basic stuff for every page on your website. This is where you would modify any of the styles. And then it's showing you how to do a module. This is one of the things that Next does pretty well. It gives you a lot of different ways to work with CSS. This is just one way. If the file has a .module.css, then it essentially converts the CSS into an object. And then you can apply it to anywhere on your page by using this styles prefix. So notice I'm importing the styles here from that module. And then whenever I wanna use any of the styles, they have been converted into sort of an object. So when you call in this element, you're actually using the styles name that's right here. And then plus whatever the name of the class that you used. So you can see here that we have this class called container. So you can call them directly into your projects, which is pretty cool. Now, in addition to that, it does set up an API folder. You can use Next.js to create an API for you. So if you dump a data file in here, you can configure it so that it works like it would with an API. Let's go ahead and start the server up. So I'm gonna do an npm run dev command. And you'll see that it's adding a next folder. This has temporary files. And now we can open up this in a browser and you should get something that looks like this. All right, we don't really need this API folder, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna take a look at this index.js file. Um, if you take a look at this head module, it's essentially being called right here. This component lets you modify anything in the head section of your website. So notice that the title is right here. Let's just get rid of the word next and save this. And you can see that it updates. In addition to that, you may notice it's using the image module. And this is basically a clone of the IMG tag. So you can see that it has a source, an alt tag, and then a width and a height. This is a super special Next.js feature. There's some huge advantages to using this image component. So for example, it will always serve the correctly sized image for every device. It also makes the pages load faster because images are only gonna be loaded when they enter the viewport. It's gonna manage all that for you. One of the things that you do wanna watch out is that you do wanna put in the proportions so that it knows how to resize things properly in here. All right, we're not gonna use any of this stuff, so I'm going to clean up most of this stuff right here. And I'm gonna call this cast members here. I don't really need this meta tag or even this favicon link. But what I do wanna do is create a layout page that is going to allow me to have different pages use the same layout. So to do that, I'm going to need to import the layout component. I'll replace this image component right now and I'll say import layout from, and then I'm going to create a file and a folder called components. 
that's going to be called layout. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll make a components folder. And in that folder, we'll create a file called layout.js. So I'm going to do a basic react component. And here I'm going to import the head component as well as pass in a prop into this called children. So I'm going to create a head section for every page. And in here, what I want to do is just use a style sheet from Pico CSS. This is going to give me some basic styles. And so to use this, what I'm going to do is click on get started. And I'm going to just put the CDN link from here and I'll paste it so that it's on every single one of my head elements. Now, because this is JSX, I need to put the slash at the end of this link. And then the only other thing that I need to do here is have a div with the children, right? So this is where it's going to put the rest of the page. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back over here. Now I'm importing this layout tag, which means that on my index file, I'm going to type in or use that layout component. So wrap everything with that layout component and I need to export the layout as the default out of this component. So now you can see that there's actually nothing here because in this index file, I didn't actually add any content. Um, I no longer need this extra module and this diff doesn't need to have this class name right here. Uh, and I do need to add something in here. So I'm just gonna put an H1 and now it says cast members. And one last thing I'll do here is add a class of container. So I'm going to do a div or I'll just do a main with a class name of container. And so now this is going to pick up the Pico CSS style sheets, which will give me a responsive grid that looks a little bit nicer. Other thing that's happening here is now if I create any additional pages, they're all going to use the Pico CSS styles because I've added it to this layout. Next.js has a few methods that you can use to bring in some data. So I'm gonna switch back over to the index.js file. And what I wanna do here is use another export statement and I'm gonna create a constant and use a method called get static props. So this is going to allow me to use the JavaScript fetch API to get some data. So I'll use this fetch API and I'm going to point this to one of my personal servers where I have just a data.json file. This could be a call to a regular API. You could actually use the API that Next.js allows you to create, uh, but I'm just gonna call this sort of static file. And once I have that data, then I'm going to bring it in and convert it into the JSON format. Now, once I have that, then I can issue a return statement and bring that into the current component through the props object. And in here, I'll just say the cast will have that data that I get from the server. So I'm gonna save that. Really, nothing's gonna be happening quite yet, but up here at the top, then I can receive that as a prop into this particular component. And then I can use it to list some of the information here. So let's just go ahead and say, we'll say cast and we'll get the first one. And you may need to refresh this page right here. All right, so let's go ahead and make this into a component. So we're gonna go in here to components, create a new file. I'll call it cast list.js. And this is going to receive the cast prop. And what we're going to do here is we're going to map the cast. And we'll start with something simple. And we'll just have about the member name here. And now I need to go back into this index and make sure that I'm calling that here. We'll go ahead and import this cast list. And then we'll use the component down here and we'll pass along the cast. And now you can see that all the members appear right here. 
All right, that's pretty basic. So let's jazz up our component a little bit more. So I'm going to Im import link. This will allow me to create links to my individual cast members later on. And I'm going to import also that image component we saw earlier. All right, in this diff, I'm just going to put in some inline styles. So you can still do inline styles like you do in React. In here, I will say uh, display grid, and I'll use grid template columns here. So here I'll do a four column layout. And I'll put a gap in here of 30 pixels. All right, so now for each one of these members, I'm going to add an image using that image component. And for this, I'm going to need to put in the source. Each one of these cast members has a slug property, and that has the normalized name of the image. And they're all SVGs. I've already moved these into the public folder. There's now an images folder in there with all of my images. And uh, this needs to be member. And this will bring in all of the images. Let's go ahead and add a few styles into the member name here. It's time to add a link to the details page right here. So here I'm gonna add a link. I'll set the href to the path of the member with an ID and I need to specify how it's going to come in. So this would be as member and the member ID. And I can include my key right there as well if I want to. So I can take it out of this. I need to go ahead and close that link tag. So after this div, then I'm also going to convert this div right here to an anchor tag. So it'll look like a link and behave like a link. So now I can roll over these different items right here. And if I click on them right now, it's going to go to a 404 page, but we're going to go ahead and fix that. Let's go and create the path we just asked for. So in the pages folder, I'm going to make another folder. So I'm going to make a cast folder and I'll do a slash here and then type in brackets ID. This is going to be both a cast as well as an ID folder. And in that folder, I'm going to need to create an index index.js file. Let's start by importing the layout component as well as the link component. And then we'll create a constant for this component. And we'll bring in this cast member as a prop. Now I need to bring in the data for each individual cast member. So I'm going to do an export here at the bottom. And instead of what I did here in the index page where I got static props, I'm going to use something different. This is going to be called get server side props. So this lets the server actually go and retrieve the data. So it's not something that the client is doing whenever you run the application. So let's go ahead and see how that works. All right. So we're going to bring in into this variable called context and we're going to do stuff that's similar to the index.js file. So I'm going to copy this fetch right here and this data retrieval. And I'm even going to copy this return statement right here. It'll just be a little shorter. So let's go ahead and paste that here. Then I'm going to create another variable here called cast member. And this is going to take the data and then run a filter so that I'm asking for the data that matches the ID that I'm looking for. So when I click on one of these right here, it's going to pass some information. So if you look at the URL, even though it's not working, you'll see that the URL has a five here because I clicked on the element with an ID of five. So each one of these cast members will generate a path with the proper ID. So I need to make sure that I can find that. So I'll say item ID. I'll look through the context that I received back and I can get to the ID of the element that I clicked on by looking for params ID here. All right. And whenever I return my props, I'm going to say cast member. And I want to get the first element in that array because when I filter, it's going to essentially look for 
any of the items that have the same ID as the one in my path. And so that's going to still return an array. It's just going to have one item. And so I want to filter that. Uh, but then when I retrieve it, I want to make sure that I specify that it's the only item that's going to be left there. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we need to sort of start laying out what this page is going to display. So here we can just return and we're going to use the layout component. We'll type in some HTML here. So main class name, it's going to use container. And I'm going to bring in here the cast member name. Right, that should be enough for a little test. And let's see what happens. So we click this. I noticed that this is actually assuming that the path is going to be member. Uh, and we've actually renamed this thing cast. I was originally going to call it cast, but then I changed my mind. I think member here makes more sense. All right, so you can see now that the name comes up. Let's go ahead and finish up some of the other work. Let's go ahead and add a paragraph here with the cast member bio. Occasionally you'll see that it wants to perform a full refresh and that's fine. Just go ahead and hit the button at the bottom. I wanna go ahead and add a link back to the original page. So this is gonna be pretty simple. Just h ref back to the main path. And here I'm going to use a Pico CSS sort of regular button to say back to cast. All right, there's that. And I probably want to add an image. And to do that, I'm going to bring the image component. Let's go ahead and add it in here. And for this, I'm going to bring the high resolution version of the image. So without the underscore TN, that SVG and everything else, I think looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save that. And I do need to give it, you know, some sort of width here. So let's try 600 by 800. And that brings in the high resolution version of the image. And now these things should be working well. And I am noticing that whenever I click on any of these, it's actually bringing up the first one. So it looks like I just missed an equal sign right here. 